everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sahir. I'm a student of Chinese medicine here in the city and I upload new videos every Monday to teach you and me more about Chinese medicine. Welcome. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking more in depth about what Chinese medicine is. We're going to talk about yin and yang, qi, and basic meridian channel theory. So what acupuncture even does with the body. So stay tuned and we'll start with yin and yang. <laughs> So the first component of Chinese medicine that I wanted to talk about was yin and yang. And yes, it is pronounced yang. So I have here um, a little whiteboard to draw it out for you. And so basically, we have a hill and we have the sun. And please don't make fun of my drawings. These are not artistic by any means. But essentially, the traditional translation of yin and yang is the yin being the shady side of the hill, and then we have the yang being the sunny side of the hill. And so basically, they are opposites, but they do complement one another. So with traditional Chinese medicine, nothing is fully yin and nothing is fully yang. And so that's why the term is so loosely used in today in modern society, because we do think of them as opposites. But the reality is, is that the two are so deeply interwoven and interconnected. You can't have yin without yang. You can't have something to compare to without that of which the comparison refers to. Well, yin is referred to things that are, let's say, darker, cooler, more inwards, more protected. These are going to contrast with that of yang, which is going to refer to things with more space, more openness, sunnier, brighter, lighter, thinner. And the two, however, can transform into one another. So the best reference that I like to think about is with sunrise to sunset. So when you think about sunrise, think about darkness turning into light. And so that's gonna represent yin transforming into yang. Once we get to mid-afternoon around 12 p.m., we're gonna be in full yang, right? Because that's the brightest time of the day. Once we start to transcend into the evening, it's now going yang into yin as we cool off and get a little bit darker. And then by midnight, we'll be in full yin. And that's when we're restorative. That's when we're inwards, we're sleeping and resting. So essentially, when a TCM doctor tells you that a certain part of your body or organ is out of balance, it basically means that at a certain level of functioning, the organ is a little too overstimulated, something a little bit more yang rather than being a little bit more restorative and slower like yin. Another example I like to think of is our modern day yoga practice. The concept or the type of yoga I wanted to use as an example today for yin versus yang is actually yin yoga. So if you're familiar with yoga, you already know that yin yoga is the type of yoga that's going to focus a little bit more on turning inwards. The whole focus here is to go deeper by holding longer postures and by creating more space when you do go into deeper stretches. Now, the simple act of moving positions is going to be more yang than it is yin. And so even within yin yoga, we have yang aspects of yin yoga. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments down below. All right, everyone, I hope you're still with me and not tuned out like this little guy right here. We're gonna be moving on into qi and traditional Chinese medicine. All right, I had to get a little glass of water because this is like teaching a lecture without actually being a professor. So it's a little bit weird and a little bit confusing, a little bit nerve wracking. All right, so. Moving on into the notion of qi in Chinese medicine. So first of all, qi is spelled Q-I, and it's basically fundamental to understanding both Chinese medicine and Chinese culture. So in the most basic and generic of terms, qi is most loosely translated into energy on the verge of becoming matter and matter on the verge of becoming energy. The way I think is most easy to translate this to English. It's essentially to think of it as life force. It's a common denominator amongst all things from mineral to living. It represents potential and actualization of change. And now from here, qi is further subdivided into 
different categories with different functions. Okay, so the first type of chi I wanted to break down for you is organ or meridian chi. Meridians are essentially the channels or the internal pathways through which chi actually flows through our body and it harmonizes, protects, nourishes, and supports the functionings of our organs. It's basically going to regulate all of that which is incurring inside. The next type of chi I wanted to talk to you about today is nutritive chi or ying chi. This type of chi is most closely associated with the blood, but it's not synonymous with the blood. It essentially manifests with the, in the blood and it moves through our vessels. This helps our bodies to transform the purest part, like the purest portion of the nutrients that we eat and we bring in, whether that be through the air, such as dashi, or food such as Gucci. And I'll write these down below so you can kind of follow along and understand what I'm saying. Next, we have Wei Qi. And Wei Qi is your defense system. It's gonna be your protective barrier against all external pathogens. This rests in the outermost superficial layers of our skin and our muscles. And it's essentially considered the most yang. So going back to the yin and yang theory, that basically means that it's gonna be like bold and fierce and on the external part of our body. And so this type of chi is going to be traveling from both the internal and external regions of our body to help protect and defend. All right, guys, you've made it to the last part of the video. So I wanted to talk a little bit just about the channel theory in traditional Chinese medicine. So we have uh, the way that the channels run. It's gonna go from chest to fingers, fingers to face, face to foot and foot to chest. And essentially those are gonna represent the main 12 organs of the body. So you have 12 main meridians through your body coursing down all over. And when an acupuncturist needles you, they're actually needling certain points along the body. So it's a little bit different than that of perhaps if you've gone to a physical therapist or you've gone to a Western medical doctor that does say that they practice acupuncture, it's actually different. This is going to focus on traditional Chinese medical theory. So it's not gonna be putting a needle into, let's say your trapezius muscle to bring some blood flow there. Instead, it's actually gonna be putting a needle into your transverse crease of your wrist to course the lung chi. So it's totally different in the way that it operates and functions internally. And these internal pathways are how Chinese medicine regulates the body and brings it back to a state of internal balance. Um, the last thing I did want to do for this video was give a few of my favorite inspirations for pursuing the medicine and link them down below in the description box. That way you can check it out for yourself and also uh, expand upon your knowledge and expand your cast or cast your net wider. <laughs> so I love, love, love Sandra. Uh, she does treatments by Lan Shin. You may have seen the uh, Gua Sha tool for the face. She actually has a, a clinic and practice here in the city, but she also does offer those Gua Sha facials. And so she would be a really great resource to check out and maybe even book a little treat yourself experience. And then the other practitioner I wanted to highlight today was Ivy from Lumine Wellness. Uh, she is a doctor of Chinese medicine located in California and her Instagram is just so aesthetically beautiful but also so informative like she is going to give you a full breakdown on especially prenatal uh, traditional Chinese medicine and postpartum Chinese medicine so if you're interested in learning more about women's health and women's body I would start with those two practitioners and then I'll keep giving you more and more resources that I myself love to explore and um, we'll continue to grow and learn together. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment what you hope to see in my next video next week.